Previously on the Superman 64 review. And now, the continuation. After no you finish the waste. LexCorp level, there's another flying level. I pretty much said everything that there is to say about the flying levels in part one of this review, so unless something extra shitty happens, I'm not going to go into the rest of the flying stages. They're pretty much all the same anyway. The remainder of this review is going to focus on the game's maze levels, because believe you me, each individual maze level delves into entire new depths of suckage. The sixth level of the game is Lex Luthor's warehouse, where you have to rescue Lois from Metallo. I passed right by Star Labs in the last flying level, and that's where Professor Hamilton is being held, but of course you're going to save the hot chick first. This is where the game really starts to get maddening. Just think about that because the things that you're supposed to do in this level make absolutely no sense. To free Lois from behind a force field, you have to operate a console in the secret chamber at the top of the room. You can't actually see the secret chamber because the game's draw distance is so bad. The secret chamber doesn't open up until you pick up a keycard. The keycard doesn't appear until you beat up all of the enemies in the room where Lois is held. What's confusing is that Lois tells you to punch out all of the enemies, not just the ones in the starting area, so I blundered around this level for ages hunting down all the enemies before I figured out what I was actually supposed to do. After you operate the console, Lois walks out and tells you that Lex is building giant robots. Then she walks away and, literally five seconds after you just rescued her, she gets captured again. To get to the new room where she's being held, you have to go to the loading docks and find a keycard that isn't there if you check for it before rescuing Lois the first time. So you go to the new room where Lois is being held and, if you're like me, you get caught off guard by kryptonite, die, and have to start the level over again. To escape the kryptonite, you have to operate three computers on the far side of the room, which you can't see because the game's draw distance is so bad. Then you go to a side room where you fight Metallo. So you're fighting a supervillain who's powered by kryptonite, which is Superman's greatest weakness. How could you possibly fight such a dangerous foe? You deck him in the face a few times, and then he runs away. Then you operate some more computers, and you free Lois again. So you go exploring around the level until you find a green computer to shut off the machine that's spitting out robots, and the camera pans over so that you can see Lois has been captured AGAIN! You kill the robots by flying into them, and then you go into the room marked Zone 4 to operate another computer to unlock the room where Lois is being held. And if you operate the computer before operating the green computer, IT DOESN'T WORK! But once you go back to the room where Lois is being held, she's nowhere in sight. Instead, you see several weird blue pillars. You're supposed to pick up the boxes in this room and set them on the pillars of light to free Lois. It took me like half an hour of wandering around this level to figure that out, because every other time that you pick up an item in this game, it EXPLODES! Now you're not going to believe this, but this level has not yet begun to suck! Because now comes the most irritating portion of the game up to now. To make absolutely certain that Lois doesn't get kidnapped again, you have to escort her out of the building. The level is now freshly full of enemies, and if Lois gets shot too many times, you have to start the entire level over. If you do the smart thing and scout ahead to kill enemies before Lois gets to them, an enemy spawns in from out of nowhere and you get 10 seconds to run back to her before she dies. Yes, you literally cannot leave Lois alone for 10 seconds before she gets abducted again. Even Princess Peach has a better track record than that. What you're supposed to do is freeze Lois with your ice breath so that the ice protects her from enemy bullets. That thought never occurred to me because, call me crazy, freezing Lois into a block of ice did not sound like a good idea! What really sucks about this part is that Lois walks so goddamn slow! Come on! Hurry up! Why the hell can't I just pick up Lois, crash through the ceiling, and carry her out myself? Oh, right, because this game is stupid! Once Lois gets to the end of the stage, Metallo jumps out of nowhere and fires a beam at her, which kills her instantly and forces you to start the level over AGAIN! If you haven't figured out the Ice Breath trick and you run over to kill Metallo before he gets a shot at Lois, the game spawns in a new enemy next to Lois and a 10 second time limit pops up. If you kill Metallo before you go kill the enemy next to Lois, the game glitches up and the level doesn't end like it's supposed to, so I had to start this level over AGAIN! What's wrong, Superman? Are you okay? No, I am not okay! This game is a piece of ass! No I'm sorry, I really don't want to play this game anymore. I have to play something else or I'm seriously going to hurt something. Did you see how bad that last level was? Did you see how confusing and poorly designed this game is? This game is pure punishment and I don't think I can take much more. Oh, I've got it. I'll play the multiplayer mode for a while. That should be a good change of pace. Yes, believe it or not, Superman 64 has a multiplayer mode. 
To access it, you have to plug more than one controller into your console and then select the new game option on the main menu. The multiplayer mode does not appear on the main menu, and if you only have one controller hooked up, the option to start a multiplayer game doesn't appear. So unless you keep more than one controller plugged into your console on a regular basis, you'd never know that this game even has a multiplayer mode. Even the menus of this game are cryptic. Why would this game go out of its way to conceal the fact that it has a multiplayer mode? Is it that bad? The game has two multiplayer modes, Battle and Race. You can have up to four players in a fight, and each player controls a Superman villain. Strangely, you can't play the multiplayer mode as Superman, but that's just nitpicking. Each player flies around a huge 3D environment in a hover car, shooting at the other players. You can fly in any direction that you want, kind of adding a third dimension to a first-person shooter. I would say that it's similar to Descent, except drawing any kind of comparison with Superman 64 would be a massive insult to Descent. The biggest problem with the multiplayer mode is the game's crappy draw distance. The draw distance is a big problem in the main game, but it makes the multiplayer mode unplayable. You and your opponent will fly around the map, and because the draw distance is so short, none of you will be able to see any of the other players. My friend Dan and I tried playing this multiplayer mode, and we both had this problem. We flew in circles for 10 minutes, and we couldn't find where the hell either of us was. Hell, at one point, both of us were in the same room in the subway map, and we still couldn't see each other in the same room! You'll fly around slowly getting bored out of your mind just trying to find your opponent before you can even start shooting at them. It doesn't help that each player has a ton of health and all of the weapons suck. It takes forever to kill just one player. I have never played a match on this mode that didn't end with both players saying screw it, crashing into each other, sitting motionless, and shooting at point-blank range just to get the match to end. That's pretty pathetic. But the race mode is even worse. Dan and I played this game for about 20 minutes and we're still not sure how it works. One player spawns rings wherever they go and the other players can fly through these rings. If the player spawning rings gets hit, they regenerate health automatically. The other players regain health by flying through the rings. Flying through the rings doesn't seem to advance the game. There's no counter or indicator on the screen telling you who's winning. We have no idea what the objective of this game is. Near as we can tell, the race mode is the same as battle mode, only with regenerating health. If that's true, then why the hell is this called race mode when the objective isn't to race your opponent? Because of the game's crappy draw distance, tracking an enemy and shooting at them for an extended period of time is not freaking possible! Throw regenerating health into a multiplayer mode that already takes forever to finish one match, and you have a game that goes on forever. It's just about impossible to win a race match. I'm actually going to go back to the single player mode because this game's multiplayer mode is somehow worse than a single player campaign. That's almost not possible! Next we're at the Daily Planet, rescuing Jimmy Olsen from Darkseid. The game's pre-mission briefing says that Jimmy is being held by Darkseid's parademons, but nobody told that to the game's programmers, so no such demons appear in this level. This level is deceptively simple because it doesn't have any puzzles. Instead, it's a giant maze! That's just great. That's exactly what this game needed to suck worse. Even better, you can never tell where you are or where you've been, because every room and every hallway looks identical! The level has three floors, and after exploring for about 20 minutes, I found Jimmy on the bottom floor. He's being guarded by two robots that will shoot him dead if you step forward, and to shut off the robots, you have to find a keycard that was dropped under Lex's black car. The black car is on the top floor, and if you look for the keycard before going to see Jimmy, the card won't be there. The game is kind of picky like that. After you save Jiminy, you have to go defuse a bomb, which I figured out is on the second floor in a room that's got kryptonite in it. You have to shut off the kryptonite and defuse the bomb by freezing both devices with your freeze breath. If you didn't find a freeze breath power-up, then... I believe the appropriate metaphor here involves a river of excrement and a Native American water vessel without any means of propulsion. <laughs> then Darkseid pops out of nowhere for a showdown. An alien warlord who's even stronger than Superman, gifted with tremendous strength and omega beams that fire from his eyes. How could you possibly fight this fearsome opponent? You run up to him and deck him in the face about eight times. Yep, Darkseid, one of Superman's greatest foes, goes down after about eight punches in the head. And then, to add insult to injury to this great villain, you have to carry his unconscious body to the start of the level so that the police can take the alien warlord that's stronger than Superman into custody. Do I even have to point out how stupid that is? The big sticking point with this level is that once you've taken down Darkseid, the level fills up with missile-firing tanks that can kill you in a few hits. Since you're carrying Darkseid, you can't defend yourself and the robots will kill you. I had to replay this level over a dozen times before I finally beat it and BULLSHIT! 
That's freaking bullshit! Look at how much health I had left! There is no way that missile should have killed me! Yeah, not only is this game terribly designed, not only are this game's graphics and physics engine absolute crap, not only does the frame rate of this game slow down all the damn time, but the game is also glitchy as hell. I've lost count of how many times Superman has flown through walls or fallen through floors into a great black void. Believe me, if you fly into a wall at top speed in one of the indoor levels, you can bank on a visit to the black hole. Superman 64 is primarily a puzzle game, and once you know how a given level works, it's fairly easy to go through the level again if you get killed. Once you know where Jimmy, the black car, and the bomb are in this level, it's fairly easy to replay it if you get killed. The problem is that being easy does not equate to being fun. Even if you know where you're going and you know exactly what you have to do, when you replay the level you still have to put up with lousy controls and a broken game engine that make the game a chore to play. I honestly don't know what's worse, wandering around the level lost and frustrated because you don't know where to go, or having to replay the same tedious level over and over again when you already know how to beat it but you keep dying. The tenth level of the game takes place at Star Labs. Professor Hamilton has escaped the parasite and hidden himself behind a force field. To draw out the professor, the parasite has triggered some device that will fill the professor's room with water. Parasite's kind of an idiot, isn't he? Flooding the room isn't going to draw out the professor, it's going to kill him! If they said that the Parasite had trapped the Professor down there as a trap for Superman, this premise would have made sense. In 30 seconds, I came up with a better story for this level than the programmers did. That is sad. The first thing that you do is go down in an elevator to talk to the Professor. He tells you to punch a code into the computer in the other room. Note that he says, THE computer, singular. You go back to the room where you started the level and the Parasite begins attacking you. The Parasite cannot be defeated no matter how many times you deck him in the face. Punch him in the head all you want, he doesn't ever go down. It took me about four deaths and having to restart this level four times to figure that out, by the way. Now even though the professor specifically told you to operate THE computer in this room, you are not supposed to interact with the giant computer that's in plain sight. Instead, you're supposed to interact with three small terminals in the back of the room that you can barely see. So just in case the game wasn't cryptic enough, now the game is actively lying to me! Once you activate the computers, you go back downstairs to talk to the professor again. He tells you to trap the parasite in this force field. This force field? There's just one problem. If you go back upstairs to see the parasite, he just stands in place and he doesn't do anything. You can't lure him to the professor's force field because the asshole doesn't move. I figured out what you're supposed to do next on pure accident. What you're supposed to do is jump into the huge pool in the professor's room and go through an underwater tunnel and grab what I can only assume is a fuse box. If you go back upstairs with the fuse box, suddenly the parasite runs over to see you like you're his very best friend in the whole wide world. Why does the parasite's behavior radically change just because I'm holding a fuse box? <laughs> Look, the parasite is stuck in a wall. He's running and running, but he's not going anywhere. <laughs> wow. Now I thought that since Professor Hamilton told you to lure him to this force field, that meant that you were supposed to lure the parasite into the elevator to get him to the professor. But surprise, the parasite can't go inside the elevator. You're actually supposed to lure him inside a new force field that appears on the top floor after you've picked up the fuse box. So that's twice that Professor Hamilton has lied to me. This guy is unfrickin' believable! After you trap the parasite, you go back downstairs to talk to the professor again, and he tells you to go back upstairs and activate another console to deactivate the force field that's trapping him. If the switch that triggers the force field is upstairs, then how in the hell did the professor trap himself downstairs, you stupid game?! And don't tell me I know this one! The next level is another flying level, right? I must be psychic! At the start of this flying level, you see another person flying through the rings ahead of you. Then you fly through some swirly blue portal thing, and a text box appears saying that Mala is now lost in the virtual world. Um, what? You mean Mala, the boss that we fought in the second level of the game and we haven't seen her since? So I flew through a swirly blue thing, and now she's just gone. I give up trying to make sense of this. Nobody on this game's development team gave a crap. They didn't even care if what little story this game has makes sense or not. I am so tired of this game. I'm tired of levels that don't make sense. I'm tired of rampant glitches. I'm tired of game developers that don't give a rat's ass about their finished product. I can't give up now. There's only two levels left. One more video. Next time we finish this.